Welcome to week number, I have no idea, what month is what? it? Week five, week, I don't know. Five, I think. That, that sounds right. Welcome to week five. How is everyone? Same. Two thumbs up. <laughs> We're all the same. <laughs> Hanging in there. Baseline, that's fair. Surviving. I think it's the best you can ask for at this moment in time. Okay. Any like thoughts on the last week? How did it go? Horrible. <laughs> it's been the worst. That's fair. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like for for me, just like concentrating, doing stuff at like work. Like I was hard to focus at like work work, um, and then uh, just like taking a moment to reprioritize like my time like what what what's important to be dedicating like my time to and like mm -hmm. it ended up fluctuating to like organizing stuff uh in light of uh just like systemic racism and everything mm -hmm. at my work um and then just reevaluating how I, I am as like a community member and then this class so it was like this one was the one that suffered uh, out of those things. I feel like it was the right way to prioritize it. At the same time, it was uh, it's a little, uh, uh, didn't get to finish the, the exercise this week, but I uh, feel like under under these circumstances. It's okay. It was, yeah, not, not the worst. Okay. This is like, those other things are far more important than this. Yeah. So I think you prioritized wisely. Good job. So sorry that like it's it feels bad to like have to do things like prioritize and put things on the back burner and stuff, but just know that we fully understand where you're at because we're there too. And so if Collab Lab has to take like a back seat and you need to like rely on the team for extra help, just like be super open about it. We're all here for each other. This is a team and we love you all. And so we will get through this. We'll keep working and doing what we can and having extra grace for ourselves and empathy for others and getting by, surviving. Anyone else? Any other thoughts? I don't know. I, I think in a positive, um, for me, I think it was a duality of, and I guess it was, it was good and it was uh, frustrating. Like we're all dealing with like everything that's going on and, and just anything else that pops up in our lives. And I think in a good way, um, I guess it, it's a, Megan now, now will understand that I got um, kind of, uh, went on like a, like a kind of a networking hunt and just from job wise. And I ended up having, you know, just a lot of things kept just rolling. And so I have a possible lead. So I'm hoping to set up an interview, at least an initial interview with someone and I mean, just there was a lot like so that that became like a priority and just kind of like, oh, this and that and this. And so, yeah, I, I kind of feel in the bill in that sense. But mine was a complete 180, but also still dealing with everything else. But yeah, so we'll see. Good. We'll Sounds see. like good things are happening. Let us know yeah. how we can help if we can help you with anything like sure. mock interviews or looking over portfolios or whatever it might be like we're totally here for you absolutely championing thank you. you thank you thank you thank you thank you so yeah it, it's it seemed to be on, on multiple levels a team thing that it just becomes too much sometimes so yeah totally fair anybody else want to share before we jump into demos and see like if you don't have the thing to demo like if you didn't get through it we can just like talk about where you're at does that sound good, Ali? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. All right. I'll turn it over to you. All righty. So, well, let's see. What about if we start with the bone? What, what am I doing? <laughs> You're demoing. I mean, you and Oh, you team. just said me. Like, I was like, I was like, is this individual? <laughs> he was like, he was I like, I don't know, I mean, you yeah. and uh, <laughs> Megan. No, you Show us yeah. Devon. Yeah, I was like, I was like, me? What, what, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> um, do yeah. you want me to share the screen or do yeah, you? Yeah, we can we can do that, Megan. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, just to, to add, it's been like a little tough. Like I feel, I feel bad to say I just feel so tired, but like, yeah, uh, yeah it's like my, um, my work has like just laid off like 25% of its company. And so everybody is just like, blah. And the students that I'm working with are like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. Um, but in a weird way, this has actually been super helpful to keep my mind off of stuff. <laughs> I've just sort of, I'll just do this instead of deal with other things at the moment and come back to them later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, Physical um, and mental exhaustion, and it's a completely natural psychological response at this yes. time. So, um, yeah, let's share the screen. Has everybody seen this and not the Zoom? link yep. okay yep, yep, yep. the new changes to zoom i can't tell anymore sometimes <laughs> um so we were supposed to um i guess i'll just read the accepted criteria and the description um we're adding a filter functionality to the grocery list that's already in place um so that when you search or type in words um it kind of minifies your grocery list to just um, display anything that contains the letters or words you're searching for. Um, so I'm sorry, Nabil, my UI skills are probably not gonna be very pleasing this time. It looks, uh, looks good though. Um, so if we come into the filter list um, input and we start typing cucumber, it um, does successfully reduce the list. And if I type something else and I want to clear the list, we have this uh, purple X that I just decided on purple because I felt like it. Yeah. Um, it Which will clear like, the list and reset it. I don't know why we like racked our brain with that initially in the week. Like, what are we doing with the X? But it's like, it's a button. Like, <laughs> can be refactored. Um, yeah. And as far as, um, the code, sometimes I think ours might have been a little bit simpler than our cohorts this time. Um, that uh, as with anything, sometimes we tend to overthink things and we're having a hard time figuring out where to, to plug things in, get uh, props from the different functionalities to show up. Um, but in all reality, the the biggest component of this is just using this filtering function over the list items. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you wanted to add, Devon? Uh, not specifically on the um, on the app, but I will say uh, to Michael, I looked at like he offered a lot of great insight on on our code review, like uh, commenting on the branch, like really good. So yeah, that was you. super helpful. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. I, I'm glad that you appreciated it. Um, but yeah, I think that's it, uh, to follow up and add a bug about the, uh, check box functionality. Um, I might've messed some stuff up when I was refactoring to, um, fix a merge conflict at the beginning of the week. So I'll double check that and file an issue so that that can be fixed. This, this right here, once you refactored it, I think this looks really good. Um, I, I think, yeah, you're right that there was like a re base or refactor issue but um, now that the checked boolean is in the item itself each item has its own boolean so i think that's good okay. and, uh, i think that's about it it worked great work yeah great work nice nice and thanks for the refactoring as well yeah well done all righty so next team Kenzie, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, awesome. So uh, I will take the bat on this one. Um, yeah, so we we met up uh, once this week um, just to kind of like run mm -hmm. over things. We did this like super asynchronously, um, which was different from all the weeks before, which we would like meet early in the week and then keep up that cadence until we were like done pretty early. Um, so asynchronously it was, that made things uh, a bit a bit challenging. So um, the very first thing uh, I just wanted to walk through, or I should actually uh, start off with our uh, issue here. 
but it, it was essentially, not essentially, I'm just going to read it. That's what I want to do. Um, one second. Yeah, so it's, uh, when a purchase is recorded, the estimated number of days until the next purchase date should be calculated and recorded in the database. Uh, this kind of ballooned into a bunch, uh, a bunch more. But uh, so the very first thing is that we were supposed to use this calculate the estimated uh, this this gist right here or gist. Um, and we there was actually one already placed in the repository uh, in uh, uh, lib that was mm -hmm. estimates, and it, it actually had a couple of refactors. I refactored it a little bit more um, from what it originally was. But essentially what this is, what this calculate estimate is, um, I think it, this whole project has been called like the smart uh, grocery shopping list. And this is where the smart comes from. So uh, this is essentially uh, a weighted average. Um, and so what that kind of looks like is um, you take your last estimate and your latest interval. So it's like my last estimate was I was going to buy it in seven days. And then I actually bought it in three days. And then you weight it according to the number of purchases. Um, so like if this was the fifth, uh, the fifth uh, purchase, um, I, the latest interval, so like the fact that I bought it uh, three days instead of five would be weighted a little bit less. But it, it, what, what we're doing is we're actually slowly pulling it towards this like average. Um, and then so eventually it becomes like, it's the idea is supposed to be that it becomes like hyper accurate. It's like based off of all these times that you purchased this item, we've calculated like this is the the estimate most likely of your next purchase. Um, so that's kind of like the brains behind all of this. Um, and so you input a couple of different fields here. Uh, last uh, last estimate is basically the last stored purchase interval. The latest interval is the interval from basically your estimate, your most recent and your previous purchases, and then number of purchases, just the amount of purchases that you've had up to this date. Um, and so that'll spit out one number, and that number will be your next frequency, um, purchase frequency. Is there anything you wanted to add, Tansy? Um, no, I think for me, like, even now on some level, I don't really understand the purpose of this functionality and what it actually contributes, like what it actually, like what type of like, you know, inherent joy does this contribute to the user? And I think a part of me, like, I, I don't know, like if I could physically kick the crap out of this functionality, I'd do it because I just don't get it. In terms of like, where would I put this? Like, where does this actually configure? Like, I've, I don't know, like, I'm sorry, I'm speaking out of rage. You can continue, Nabil, but I think you did a great job in terms of tackling this logic. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I'm speaking out of rage. Uh, gonna use that a little bit more. Um, so uh, the next thing. So at that point, I'm just like, based off of what we said before, I'm just walking through the logic of, of what we went through. Um, so the very first thing is that, um, so before we had this like full list um, component, full list before, actually, hold on. Oof. Um, list I think I can compare it with previous yeah so if we look at this um, I believe this was the no yeah so the list before encompassed everything so the get list component uh, not only would display the um, unordered list but it would actually populate each individual item by itself so we abstracted that out um, and made each uh, item uh, its own individual component. And I think that's what um, Yvonne and Megan did as well. Um, the reason why we wanted to do that is because uh, basically we wanted to, for each individual item, we wanted there to be a state associated with it, um, where if you clicked the check mark, um, you would uh, calculate an estimate. Um, I will basically, you would count it as purchased. You would 
update all of the, the kind of the purchase associated data items, which included purchase uh, frequency, last purchase date, next purchase date, number of purchases, and you would send that over to um, the database. Um, and if it was unchecked, you would um, basically just keep it as is. The functionality there was like a little hard. It was like, do we, if you click it and un it's basically if, if it's today and you're clicking and unclicking it um, in one session, like what's the expected behavior from that? Is it mm -hmm. that it's just counting each one as a purchase? Is it that um, it doesn't count until like the next day? Just like some, some of the underlying logic there was a little confusing um, in terms of like what is actually happening while you're clicking and unclicking. And that was uh, a little unclear. Mm -hmm. um, but what we decided to do was just, um, I had a little bit of a, a struggle trying to figure out, okay, is this, is this a stateful component in the sense that it's like, um, it is uh, like the, the date, the state within it is like changing a lot. And after, at first I created, I used uh, state hooks uh, for each individual item. I wanted to retain the old information and keep the new information. Um, so that if you are clicking and unclicking, we were basically just sending information to the uh, the server, being like old data, new data, old data, new data, um, and that was it. I there's a lot of unintended behavior. I was getting uh, like it was updating to the um, the the server, but it's behaving uh, in ways that I didn't expect, and I'll show you that in a second. But um, so I the first the first like struggle was. Um, is it, do you, does this count as state? Does this not count as state? Because I really, as soon as you calculate these, uh, these objects, I don't need to do anything more. It's just like, I'm either sending or I'm not to the server. I, it's not something that the component itself needs to be like hyper aware of, but it needs to be calculated and then sent. And in that sense, I was like, okay, it's not really changing over time. It's not, um, yeah, it's just like, it's calculated from other, uh, these are like passed down, uh, this is like, this is uh, information I'm getting from the server. I don't think this is, uh, needs to be state. It could just be s served up in a variable and then sent to the, to the server. So that's, that's kind of where I left off. Um, I felt pretty good with that and I felt good with the, the logic. I changed the logic up a little bit. Um, I created like a handle check. So there is an event handler. So before the whole event handler was in on change and it was just like setting is checked and not checked and instead of having uh, a state state for that i just actually grabbed it from the actual uh the the component itself which i think it was probably better before but this is where I, where i left it um and the logic is basically if it's checked i'm going to update uh the data in the server with um the the new object the new data object and um and I was just leaving this just to make sure everything was functioning. It was communicating everything to me. And then if, uh, if it's not checked, then update it with the old data. Um, and so that's, that's basically what was happening. So if, uh, can you see this screen now? Yeah, okay. So this is not gonna behave how I want, but uh, it is going to behave, <laughs> so uh, yeah. So basically right now what we have is, um, this is within the collection of leads web robot. So I have that uh, up here. Um, and if I uh, uncheck it, it's gonna pull old information, which it says old data in here. I should actually, um, I was just messing with this recently. So, okay. So it's gonna update stuff, but it's not gonna update it the way I want. So right now, well, one, I don't understand why each time I'm clicking and unclicking it, the number of purchases keeps going up. I, I just ran into this. I'm pretty sure I could like troubleshoot it. And it probably has to do with the object uh, referencing. Um, it's basically doing a calculation each time it's running, I think. Not quite sure why it's doing that, but um, the purchase frequency is kind of saying the same and these dates aren't. But I think if I was to come over here and change it, like change the, but sorry, you guys are in the way. Change it. So, okay, so the last, let's see, last purchase date is today. But if I was to change it, let's say 
to Wednesday and update it. And I came over here and that should update it right away. And I can test that out just by being like strong coffee. And so that updates over here. And so once I click it, yeah, so it updates. So the last purchase date is today. It updates that information. So there is some type of, basically I've narrowed it down to um, the way that I'm handling the updates um, is not working as intended, but everything else is. So I just have to come over here and kind of figure out why um, these objects are like why, for instance, this is recalculating each time, why it's rerunning and redoing it each time. Um, I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that when there's a change in a React component, it re-renders everything. And so it's probably re-rendering that and then it's updating everything. But yeah, so that's that's where we are. So the like unchecking functionality that you have here, like I, I'm not familiar with the issue. Did it say something about being able to uncheck it? Because I think that like when you check it, that means like it's purchased, right? And that's when it should start calculating like when you'll need to purchase it again. But is there like an acceptance criteria or something about unpurchasing it? Because I think that the way that it's been handled in the past is something like after 24 hours, it becomes unpurchased. Mm -hmm. It becomes yeah. unchecked after 24 hours, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think I was just confused about that in terms mm -hmm. of the, the user story itself. It gave me just an inf enough information to uh, introduce a human error, I think. Mm -hmm. which was, I wonder if like there's yeah. a way we can make it so that you can't manually uncheck it and avoid all of the like issues that yeah, are coming Yeah, I mean, that, that is, I could easily do that, no problem. Um, and that reduces the the logic incredibly. Um, I think I was just unaware that that was the approach that we were taking. Um, okay. Yeah, this issue is like always really confusing. I'd love to find a way to like scale it down or explain it better or have like a better example or like because it's totally confusing for sure. Um, yeah. So this is good to see. What what thoughts do you have, Michael and Ali? Uh, I think that having uh, more detail in the ticket for expectations of like what it'll look like when it's done will be helpful, I think. Mm -hmm. um, right now it's it's just kind of a, a quick one-liner. Um, yeah, we should just add more detail on like what to expect and how and like just something that you would see like, like in manual test cases in a ticket, you know? Mm -hmm. So as far as like getting this one done specifically right now without like changing the issue at all, do you have thoughts on like what we could do to call it complete? Like after seeing that, like any, like- I think I'll have to look at the code more. Um, okay. I think it's pretty close to complete and we can work in anything left out in future work. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with Michael. And yeah, we should provide more details in this story in the future. As... Nabil, what issue number is that? Um, I'm always confused because in the beginning we had a issue and it, I think it is 11, but it okay. says 10. Yeah, it's 11. Yes, it's number okay. 11. Got oh, it. The URL, it says 11, but the number is 10 or the other way around. Yes. Maybe. Got it. Yeah, because there was like some, there was like a little issue that was open, like very, I think like Alejandro did it. Um, mm, yeah. And then close, and then close it, and now the just the the order, the totally. nu the numerical value is different. Okay. Um. So okay, we will add for future cohorts better user stories there, or like better acceptance criteria and detail around how to do that, and for this mm. one. Can you, do you have like a draft PR up for it yet? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then Michael, do you feel like you have a good grasp on like what the functionality sh could be? Yeah. Like, I, I need like, to look at it again because I looked at it this morning and I think you've changed the code a bit since. Yeah. Uh, 
I've changed it quite a bit. So, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll look at it again and, and we'll kind of like, uh, I'll do that later today and post inside the channel um, for us to be able to just put a pin in it and mm -hmm. and, and say like, we completed this uh, this stuff this week. That's what I'm thinking. Like, can we do something to get like the bare minimum of this wrapped today so that we can move on to next week's issues like without right. yeah. pause? Okay. Otherwise, I, generally I don't like stuff like that uh, creeping into work in the future because it, makes you feel like, you know, you just have this like ball and chain uh, following you around this ghost, ghost of a, of a feature. <laughs> yeah. I'm cool. pretty sure I can get it up and running today pretty easily. Um, okay. But yeah, just with a little bit of I guidance. know like mental stamina is limited right now. So I totally understand if that, you know, doesn't happen, we'll find a way to like work around it. Cause the other option would be something like the issue follows like one of you, then Bill, for example, like, and it, you yeah. would take it on like next week with your partner and finish it up, make sure there's like good documentation around it and understanding about how it works and what it does so that everybody else working with it can better understand such a confusing issue. Um, so keep us in the loop. What we'll do is after the presentation, we'll do breakout rooms as if we're like moving into the next week as expected. Um, and then if end of the day comes and it's looking like this isn't going to be wrapped up for a day or two, then we'll kind of shift to that, like, let this issue roll over for a week and make sure there's just really good understanding around that. Um, and then we'll just be off by one issue, which in the last week, it's mostly like design anyway. So we could kind of like clump some issues together at that point. Sound good? Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Of course. Okay. I know that one's so confusing. It always is. So. If you have ideas around like how to make it less confusing, let us know. Because I'd hate dealing with that one. That's the worst one of them all. Go team. <laughs> it's good to say that after the week has ended. Yeah. Not yeah. She's yeah. Like, That's my least favorite. Mm -hmm. That's a rough one. I don't think it has to be. I yeah. think that like in like theory, it shouldn't be so complex, but I think like the naming of things alone like makes things really confusing so anyway i think it's a good lesson this happens a lot in our industry where uh uh imagine like you're a product guy and you have some really a product product person and and you have some really simple like idea and you, you, people say this a lot oh this shouldn't be very hard this shouldn't be very hard but you communicate it poorly, and then the engineer picking it up looks at it and, and you know just scratches their head for a week on it because the words are like ambiguous. Um, so it's it's really a really interesting lesson to to learn about that, which leads right perfectly into my uh, presentation I'm going to be doing. <laughs> awesome. Take it away. <laughs> All right. Cool. I didn't mean to do that, but it just fell right in my lap. Works. That's the, that's the professionalism. <laughs> I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, communication. Boom. Uh, so I'm gonna be doing a short presentation to uh, help. I think this is showing my whole screen here, but that's good. Uh, or the, the whole browser. Um, I want to do a quick presentation just to dip your toes in the water on communication. What that looks like for um, a software engineer and why we do it. Why is it important? And this doesn't apply for people looking for remote jobs. Uh, honestly, like I, I, I think before I started working my first remote job, I would have assumed these were more like remote practices. But if I ever do find another job in the future, um, maybe I work as Zapier for like the rest of my life. That'd be cool. Uh, but if I do get an <laughs> office job where I'm co-located with all my coworkers. Again, I'm gonna be taking a lot of these practices into the office. I think they're actually more important when you're in the office than in a remote setting. So, um, arrows aren't working. Question okay. real quick, would you say that the, uh, I know going, but would you say that it's more inherent in, in remote work? Like that it, you just kind of have to do it? Right, so uh, communication skills, you, communication in general, you have to do it out in the open in a remote world because you're just sitting in your your office or a coffee shop or or a brewery or something on your own you're not with your coworkers ever i think that 
a lot of the communication in an office setting happens uh, when you're sitting next to somebody and or mm -hmm. you're in the kitchen or in the bathroom or something. You just walk by somebody, you hear somebody saying something and you jump in and you solve problems. Um, the reason why I say that your communication skills are more important in an office setting and like being able to record those decisions in that context, because imagine you hire someone a year from then, um, how are they going to understand what led up until that moment? Right? So your documentation form uh, is a form of your, the history of, of the work that you're doing. Like a history book is to the United States. And if you don't have that context, then people who are born, right, born centuries into the country, don't know what happened to get us here, which, you know, uh, I didn't mean to pull on that, that, uh, <laughs> that one there, but it, it, it makes sense, right? Um, all right, so communication is key, as I just got done talking about. Um, so the most important part of communicating, like I was saying before, is your documentation. I think that a lot of people have a very narrow definition of what documentation is. People will think that it has to be comments in your code. Maybe documentation to you means a wiki page that uh, explains something, right? It explains a feature, an epic, right? But documentation is a lot more than that. Um, I, I'm sad that this is backwards here. So I meant to, uh, I guess I didn't save, but I, um, yeah. So what, what kind of, uh, ways can we document our, our work? Wiki pages, like I said, PR descriptions, that's a big one. And we've been working on that here in collab lab. Um, commit messages are, are a form of documentation. So back a few weeks ago, uh, when I was sharing my screen with y'all, uh, we all got on a call, uh, Late at night for me, I think it was just regular evening for mm -hmm, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, Nabil noticed that I had a plugin a extension on VS Code that showed you the commit message for every single line of code. So after a repo has been open for years and years and years, those commit messages mean a lot because they immediately tell you who did it, what work they were doing. Maybe they put a Jira card number or a GitHub issue number in there and it helps you connect the dots. Um, your Slack conversations are a form of uh, documentation. I, I, I want to preface this with public. So a lot of you have conversations and friends, you have friends uh, at work or in, or in Slack orgs that you talk one-on-one -on -one with, you have private conversations. I want to stress that, that the conversation you have about the work that you're doing is very important to yeah. do in public channels. And the reason is that like, like in the office setting that I described where I walked by somebody talking about something, I hear it and then boom, we solve it right there. If I don't record that, if, I don't, if it's not out in the open, people don't know what happened. And so when you talk about working on stuff, it's very important to do it in a public place where it's accessible to everybody. Uh, your designs. So if you have a designer who creates um, um, some mocks in Figma, Sketch, a tool like that, those are designs. They communicate how the feature should be working. It's not just an engineer's role to be documenting things. Um, the traditional word document, I didn't know actually what like to call those other than word documents, kind of like Kleenex, what do you call that? Like, I guess tissue, right? Um, spreadsheets, presentations, um, and my favorite one, videos. So that's a, not one that pops in your brain right away, but I think we all have webcams and we all have ways to record. I think just doing a quick three minute video really helps give context where some of these other pieces of documentation uh, or examples of ways you can do documentation uh, don't necessarily cover very well. Um, maybe you're just demoing uh, your feature and you want to talk about it. I'll go back to why. Um, I've already been talking about some of these whys, but um, the big one uh, for you as an individual, it helps you uh, trace back your steps. Maybe you leave for a long vacation. You could leave for two weeks. Wouldn't that be really nice? Um, I'm actually going to the beach in a, uh, about six weeks, so I'm excited for that. But when I come back from the beach, I'm going to forget everything I did, right? So I need to be able to look, read commit messages, read GitHub conversations, and get caught up with the work I did, plus what happened while I was gone. Um, 
having this communication, like I said, in public places helps prevent institutional knowledge. So when you hire new people and when people come back from vacation, they can catch up really easily. Um, yeah, and, and this, like, like I was saying before, it's individual, team, and organizational. It falls on all levels. So some quick tips here. Um, write, for, write for everyone and write for the people who know the least. So it helps, the, what I mean by that is um, put context into your, into your documentation uh, and don't assume that they, the person reading this knows a bunch beforehand before opening it up. That might not always be the case. So you can connect the dots with forms of documentation um, to help to help you do that. So let's say I'm writing a PR description and I have a design that I was working off of. I'm gonna link that design in the PR description to help you as the reviewer, you jump in, maybe you didn't even know I was working on this feature, you open it up, you need to be able to get as much context as quickly as possible. So clicking a link to the design is gonna be like, whoa, okay, they're making a grocery list app. This is great, I get it. I'm gonna go back to the PR and review it now, right? Otherwise you might be like, well, what's going on here? You know. Um, and focus maybe on the wrong things. Pull requests. Uh, so to get down in more detail here, um, pull requests. I I think pull that I want to focus on pull requests here because they're a primary source of documentation. We talked about some of those other ones, um, designs and word documentation, spreadsheets, presentations. Those are all ways that engineering folks interface with other parts of their team. But engineer to engineer, the PR is, is uh, very important. It's the, probably one of the most important things. I don't know where to rank them. I don't know. I, I'm just thinking of this off the top of my head. Alejandro, you, maybe you have an idea of what the most important, you think the number one most important piece of documentation is, or tool, medium. Um, we can talk about it afterwards. Um, so, uh, a big part of, of interviewing and then, and, and, uh, helping guide somebody through your PR is walking through the code. Um, so walking through the code can be, I have this on another slide here. Um, have screenshots, have GIFs, have, uh, emoji help express your emotions through text and videos. Um, those are all really good mediums to help communicate what you're doing in your PR. Um, like I said before, have links to uh, resources um, that influence that work. And one really cool thing that people do, uh, especially for big PRs uh, that might tackle more than one problem, um, just review it like it's somebody else's code. So that's that acts as a couple of different uh, of it, it, it helps you in a couple different ways. So it's like proofreading your own paper. Um, I know that proofreading your own like essays back in like grade school, that's problematic because you might miss typos that you normally would catch in other people's work, but it still does help. And it helps you read through your code as if you were someone else. Um, and then you can also go in there and, and leave comments on your own code. So when the second person who reviews it comes in, they get that immediate context that might not be a good um, comment in your code, but it's good for a PR. Speaking of comments in your code, um, that's another really good way to, to document and communicate uh, intent and, and uh, functionality of your code. So I have one right here. This is, uh, I, I, I missed the syntax. I'm just so used to using TypeScript that I forget the, the way to syntax highlight your JS doc, but you can leave comments on components like this to communicate what the props are. So when you maybe you have a component that's like 200 lines long, it's really hard to understand what all the props are that a component uses. But if you leave comments like this, um, then it'll help you real quick understand that this needs an ID and a last purchase date. So if you don't pass those in, it's not going to work, right? And um, not only comments here in the code, uh, but you can leave comments in PRs like I was mentioning before. I think that the big difference, you might ask, why should I leave a comment in the code? 
or why should I leave a comment in a, like a PR? Um, the comment in the PR on a commit uh, helps capture a thought at a given time while uh, comments, once you plug them into a file, they're going to be there for a while, right? Um, they may never get deleted and they might age poorly. So let's say this component changed. It, it's not a grocery list item anymore. It's a um, grocery checkbox. Let's say we had to change it for some reason. I might forget to update the comment and now the comment is ambiguous. But if you leave a comment in a PR, it's always going to be relevant to the line that, it, that you left it on. So just something to think about. I, I was talking about this slide here just a second ago, so yeah. <laughs> um, so we have a really interesting here uh, example of a comment that, um, that is effective in code. So generally, th there's a meme. I really wish I got uh, this picture here to, to better communicate what I'm trying to say, but there's like a meme where um, it's a, what the developer comments uh, in their code, and it's like, this is a tree. And it's like tree equals blah and you comment above it, this is a tree. And it's like, okay, no duh, it's a tree, right? You, you said it, you called it the variable tree. Um, effective comments here that uh, I totally like whiffed on that joke, by the way, it was much funnier in my head. But uh, <laughs> comments that are explaining why um, are very effective uh, as opposed to like what are not very effective. So think about that when you're leaving comments. Think about the why. That, that usually helps expose context and intent a lot more. All right, so let's take, just take a couple minutes and um, brainstorm here together um, if anyone wants to share uh, thoughts on their, on their mind um, about experiences they've had so far and in other places with uh, documentation and like what has been effective for you and what's maybe not been effective. I love good communication. It's like my lifeblood. I like worked as a technical writer before this all. And so like, it's something that I love to see. But when you're thinking about like communication and good communication, especially in this stage of your like early developer careers, it's super important, not only for your team so that you can all make sure you're on the same page. Like Michael was saying, like we're now like decentralizing this information that's in your brain and sharing it with the team that we have right now in the team in the future, but it's also good for you. And this was like briefly touched on in the presentation, but I think it's so important for us to kind of like recognize that at this point, you're gonna be going into a lot of interviews where they're gonna wanna see examples of code you've written. And you're gonna forget why you wrote it like that. Like you're gonna look at a piece of code and you're gonna be like, I know that I struggled to write this code. I don't remember what struggles I faced. I don't remember why I chose to do the things the way that I did them. And if in your PRs and in your comments that explain why, you can give yourself a refresher, you can then go back five months from now when you have an interview and talk through the whole process of how you got there and why you made the decisions that you did in an intelligent way with just a quick refresh of your PR. So that's how it's gonna help you now. That's also how it's gonna help you when you are working like on a team in the future and they're like, we actually wanna take this feature that you built five months ago and do something different with it you're gonna be able to like more easily like clean up the pieces as you refactor, as you change things, because you're gonna more deeply understand why rather than just reading the code and guessing. So I like to think of documentation in a very selfish way, um, although it is something that benefits the whole team. So good communication. I have one last thing. Uh, you already said everything perfectly, but I would add that Maybe you can think about starting uh, like a blog, like or writing in a platform like Dev2, for example. Like that is a really good thing for you because you document what you learned, and that is what I've been doing in Zapier lately. It's like, yeah, I learned this. This was a really hard problem for me to solve, so I documented and shared it with others. And for you, that because you're going to be looking for a job, that is really, really, really helpful and it will make a difference night and day from you and other person that haven't written anything at all. So think about that, like, I don't know, I built a to-do list app with, that is uh, like a grocery shopping list, that is a smart shopping list and it's made of this, right? Like, if you do that, it is good for you because like in two years, you probably will 
not remember anything of this, like of the code. But if you write it, you can go back to your post and say like, oh yeah, this is how I did it. So think about that. That is a good thing to do. I love that. And like, not only is that good for like you as you're going to like interviews and stuff, like to refresh for yourself, but it also shows like people want you on their team if you're passionate about teaching other people thing and you can articulate your thoughts well. So if you're going into interviews and you do have like a whole collection of technical posts and things that you can show off, it's like, that's the person I want on my team, the person who can write well and the person who's passionate about sharing information. Yeah, I was going to mention that uh, when you started that we started to talk about blogs is that um, you can, it's almost like a way to sell yourself as a developer, the why you should be hired. I think that if you have a blog with some interesting uh, blog posts and it doesn't matter what you're writing about, even if it's been written about a hundred times before, it's important that you still write about it because you might have a different perspective. Um, but anyways, 99% of engineers out there do not do that. And if you do that, uh, you'll set yourself apart. So I think that's a really good, a really good point. For real. The, like the processes that you're like, as you're pair programming and you're writing out your weekly process for like, here's how we're going to solve this. And here's the documentation we used along the way. And here's how we like came to like finalize this new feature. All of that is beautiful documentation that you can just like flip right into a blog post. Like, I think I even have some from collab lab where it's like, here's the process. I'm going to take this PR description, make it into an article that like I see getting tons of traffic all the time on how to use Firebase. So it's like, get your name out there, take these things that you're just doing anyway and make them into blog posts. Like at work, I just did that. Like I just did a project at work and was taking notes just like you would and then turned it into a blog post. And now it's like helping more than one person, helping more than one team, helping the world, help the world communicate well. <laughs> um, this has actually been helpful just beyond this as well because I am... Um working in kind of like a fine arts school from a technology standpoint. Um, people have uh, lots of wildly different questions. And so for instance, I offered some project support this summer and it's like, okay, I want to 3D print this thing, which is sounds like a simple enough question, but that's like a lot to explain of like, well, here's how you prepare a file for 3D printing. Here's how you design 3D modeling, all the stuff. Um, but I've started using uh, Loom and I just like walk through like, here's how you get started. It's two minutes. There you go. You can just copy and do this. Um, so yeah, it's been super helpful. And now I'm just going to talk with um, my school about doing that more often to have like a kind of an entry inter wiki for equipment and things like that. I love Loom. Alejandro makes me good Loom videos all the time and I love them so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it is a really good tool, you should use it. Yeah. Anyone else have thoughts on where you can apply good documentation, where you personally feel like you have excelled or maybe want to improve or something that you think could be easy to work into your like everyday life that could help you? create really great documentation or communication? I think some of the, the best places that I've, this this is taken outside of like um, engineering and stuff uh, and, and product work. Uh, it's just typically anytime I'm entering like a new process, they're like, hey, you, you need to go do this. And like everyone has to filter through that. Um, and there's no process there. There's no documentation. All normally just like, document all my struggles and basically create an onboarding or something uh, like at my company I made the first onboarding doc because my onboarding experience was so frustrating um, and so it's just uh, a list of questions and then I answer those questions and then we had an onboarding doc so um, yeah anytime you're love frustrated it. that's a good time yes I love that Anyone else want to share? No pressure. It's uh, interesting. Um, back in 2000 and I guess 11, when I got my, well, I guess my first programming job was in 2008. I would have never 
like thought about GitHub comments being a form of documentation. I would have never thought about making your own videos like YouTube was in its infancy, right? So I think it's important to always reassess as technology changes, what's a, what are the better, or I guess, most relevant ways of communicating. So right now I think videos are, are awesome, but maybe in the future, uh, there's like a new, a new medium to, to communicate well. And so, yeah, I would, uh, down the road, don't get like stuck in, in one thing, always reassess and, and look to improve. If that makes sense. Cool. Any other thoughts or should we jump into next week's issues? All right. Jumping in. Is that a real cat in your back in the background? Or is that a stuffed animal? <laughs> the, the cat said, Oh me? Cat. Yeah. That's a yeah. coyote stuffed animal. <laughs> my living room's <laughs> a mess because my kids are home and they're a nightmare. So no. <laughs> <laughs> this is normal. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's see. Share screen. I don't know what's up on my screen, so if it's something weird, it's not excellent, just the way I like it. All right, I did not prepare like I usually do. Don't judge me. We're gonna go into the projects. We are going to, this is the one, right, that's, yes. We're gonna that try and wrap this up today. Progress. Yeah. Great, yep. we're gonna try and wrap that up today, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to the other ones as, expected. I'm going to see who the pairs are because I haven't even done that. I got so chat. captivated. They're in the chat. That leads me to also have to find the chat. Let's see. Okay. Somebody just tell me what they are. Um, okay. So me and Tansy and okay. Nabil and Megan. Perfect. Devon, Tansy, Nabil and Megan. We have Issue three number more weeks, by the way. It's going yeah. so fast. Oh my God. That breaks wow. my heart kind of. I don't even want to think about it or talk about it. <laughs> Next. I'm just kidding. I love you all and I'll just miss you. Okay. As a user, I want to delete items from my shopping list in cases where I make an error entering the item or where I know I'll no longer need to buy it in the future. And issue 12, which is as a user, I want to view a list of shopping list items in order of how soon. I'm likely to need to buy each item again. So this one is gonna play off of that one that's still in progress right now where those dates are being calculated. And this is kind of like, I guess probably would be helpful to know before the other one even starts so you understand the why. Like Tansy was like, why are we even doing this, right? So it's like, eventually it's gonna be sorted by like which ones you need at the top. Um, okay, so this one's gonna play off the other one. This one is going to be deleting items. Anything jump out to anybody in particular that they want to take? If not, I want to do the deleting item. I, I do too. Yeah. Oh, yay. <laughs> yay. Same thing. Okay. All right. So sorry. Tansy is like, I'm not calculating <laughs> anything else ever again. <laughs> Tansy. Come on. All right. 11 is there. 12 is going to be. Which this is probably good since Nabil is going to be so familiar with those calculations, you superstar. <laughs> Great. You've got this. No, Here's no, the... yeah, it's, it's fine. It was just a, a busy week. We have all the grace for you. If you need extra help or extra time or extra support, we're totally here for you. That goes for everybody. I love you all. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, there okay. is now. Just feel free to ask for help. Yeah. Y'all are the best. Okay. Before we go out into breakout rooms, any last thoughts? I appreciate all of your like commitment and dedication and turbulent times. And again, we're a team. We're all here for each other. Lean on us as you need us. We'll give extra where we can give extra and we might need to take extra support when we need it as well. Good. Love y'all. Okay. Manually creating these breakout rooms, which we all know is always something that I do really well. Michael, Nabil, Megan in one, Alejandra, Devon, Tansy in the other. All right. With that, opening the rooms. Hi, everybody. Have a really great week.